Hello and welcome to the pre-match show as Coach United take on Accrington Stanley with a 3 p.m. kickoff. You can have a look at the team that Danny Cowley has selected on our website and on our social media. Coming up on the show today, we'll hear from Jay Mingy as well as having a look at the last encounter with Accrington Stanley. But before all that, you might have seen that we'll be using a rainbow coloured ball this afternoon as part of the EFL's celebration of the LGBTQ plus history month. Now, as part of the launch, Fikra Kelleher went to The Outhouse. Uh, the Outhouse is a LGBTQ plus uh, charity based here in Colchester. And Fikra caught up with two of their members to chat about what they do and why representation in football really does matter. Hi, I'm Fierke Kelleher uh, and I'm here at the Outhouse uh, in Colchester and uh, we're here to support the LGBT plus community um, just for the, the History Month um, and I'm here with two very lovely people uh, to have a chat and um, yeah just have a, a catch up and uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Chloe and I've been at the Outhouse for around a year now. I joined February last year. I'm Liv. I've been coming to the Outhouse since November 2022 and now I've taken on the role as assistant youth worker. The Outhouse has been here since 1979 and it is an LGBTQ plus charity that offers lots of services to adults and young people within the community. Has it always been at this building? It has, know? hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it started out as a switchboard. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. How did you hear about this place? How did you kind of come to be in here? I just found it online. Right. I was just looking for something exactly like this and it literally fell into my lap. Okay. Like perfectly. Just, yeah, just searching. But I know a lot of people find it from school. I found out about it because um, my mum had informed me about it. Right. And I did like a little interview up here and I thought it seems like a nice place. So I gave it a go and then, yeah, it's been really nice. Oh, so nice. Been. Yeah, it seems just from, from being here, it seems really friendly, friendly place yeah. and very... Um, very easy to come into. It's literally the, the best thing I've probably ever done yeah. in here. Um, there's literally no other place like it, no services really in the UK, um, like the outhouse. Uh, it's just literally like a lifeline. Yeah, I suppose you've probably made loads of friends here and, and people yeah. who are, I suppose, feeling similar to you that don't really have any other... Yeah, it's really uh, lovely to have people that know exactly what you're going through, even without like saying it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'd say probably like 98% of my friends now are people that come here, okay, that I've met cool. through the youth groups and the youth yeah. forum. I felt really comfortable the first time I came, and um, when I first like came out as trans, I was very lucky to have all these people here to like support me. We go on stuff like, like I mentioned, the trips and residentials. We've been on trips like Wales and stuff. Cool. Last week we went on a trip to London, that was probably one of the best days I've had this year. What kind of stuff do you do on your trips? Like go to museums or something? Or? We went to two museums last week. We went to um, the National History Museum, we went to uh, oh, Queer nice. Britain. Right. Queer Britain helped me understand a lot more about the fights for gay rights and that lot. And yeah. Yeah, it was just absolutely amazing. Ah, oh, cool. How do you feel about it? Obviously us using a, a rainbow ball and what does it mean to you to have that we're using a, a rainbow colour ball this weekend? I think it's really, really good what the EFL is doing and that lot and what you guys are doing at Goal United. Like, I think it's showing how far we've come in that lot, how we're being like represented more and like the words being spread out more that anyone's welcome in the game. Queer people didn't get um, the sort of rights they have now just by waiting until someone did it. I think making sh like pushing our way in as well and sort of being like, do you know what? It doesn't matter, I'm going to be here and whatever happens, you know, I'm going to enjoy this game. Yeah. But seeing the rainbow ball will sort of just make it known that if something did happen, that you've got some people back in your corner and it just feels so lovely to see it. Oh, well, I'm, glad it I'm glad it does mean um, something to you. I know it's only a small gesture, but... Um... I, I heard that they would uh, donate every time there was a goal to a uh, charity. Uh, for LGBTQ plus people and I think that's such a great, I mean that's going a little step yeah, further yeah, which yeah. is really lovely yeah. to see. Understanding that just a rainbow ball isn't going to make, just, yeah, yeah, you, you know, change the world. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really lovely. I think we need to see it more in the Premier League as well because that, obviously that's top flight. 
and it's yeah that's where the real money is <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah getting through might be a bit harder but it'll happen definitely yeah, and I'll make sure the lads make <laughs> score as many goals as they can yeah yeah that could that <laughs> yeah, would be good yeah. <laughs> always good yeah do you feel that that football is becoming a more inclusive place it's not going backwards yeah. there are a few um, openly gay players now but I think seeing the ball it's it's really lovely to see and like in some of the other football, the international matches, when the little rainbow car comes out, I think seeing things like that, they're always really lovely to see. Yeah. But I think could always do more. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it sort of it costs nothing really. I know, like you've got to think about your career, but what the real thing that people are scared about, and like football fans, is thinking that their game is going to change. So once people do it more or come out or just openly support the LGBTQ plus community, I think they'll realise that it's not going to change anything. Yeah, even for us, I think we can even do more. Mm. Like even when they're, they're rainbow laces, it's something that um, doesn't take much effort that no. may, and it, it might make a difference to just how, how you feel if you see us wearing them. So um, yeah, yeah definitely. I definitely feel there's more things we can do as players as well. I think inclusivity in football is really, really important. Like, it spreads the word about how there's, like you said, how there's, like, more openly gay footballers now, which is really good. I'm glad that we've built up throughout the years confidence and helped people find themselves, yeah. like, build up their confidence in that lot to come out, because it's a huge world out there. Um, I know if we spread more awareness, it will help more people understand in that lot, and this game's for everyone. It's not just... Yeah, it's not just yeah. your, your, your average... Um, yeah, no. Stereotype footballers that should be allowed yeah. come and should be. I mean, open like at the everybody. end of the day, we're all human. And have you have you come to games recently, football games, or do you still feel it's um, like how do you feel coming to to a stadium kind of Personally, environment? Personally, for me, I wouldn't go to a men's game. Right. Um, I just think it's a very hostile environment, um, and I would probably always be on guard, and I wouldn't okay. probably be able to enjoy myself. Right. I'd go to a women's game, yeah, yeah. definitely, right. um, but I think the men still has too far to go. Yeah. And I think a lot of openly gay fans feel like that. Yeah. Or closeted, yeah. you know, I don't think they would go to a game. The last time I went to a football game was actually 2021 or 2022. It was um, actually where Spurs and Cole United played each other in like, oh, as yeah. a friendly, the football games have been to... The crowd's not been like that hostile and that lot. I'm just happy that um, when I do go, I've got people with me to like support me and be yeah. there by my side yeah, and that yeah. lot, so I can always feel safe. Is there anything we as a club and or us as players can do to help you feel more included in things? I think maybe not just celebrating the community in the months that are like LGBTQ History Month or um, Pride Month. Yeah. or anything like that I think throughout the whole year just always trying to think of different ways I mean like the rainbow shoelaces would be lovely to see as like a sort of standard yeah um just sort of showing that you know that they, they won't go and everything yeah. like that yeah, yeah um but I understand that it's still very hard um because you've got to think about your career but also it's got to be everyone agrees yeah it should be just a normal yeah, absolutely. It's a normal thing, shouldn't it? Or shouldn't yeah. really have any impact on no on on society or, or what fans think. Really, it should just be very normal. Yeah, we've yeah. had we've had multiple talks with the PFA, which is our, our players um, kind of the association. Yeah. Um, they've had people in to talk to us about it and um, just help us understand and, and and be aware that we may have a yeah. a, a gay member in the in the change room. Um, and it's definitely educated all of us. Um, and just from my own experience, I've been in so many change rooms where people, everybody really would not, no. it wouldn't make any difference really at all. Yeah, that's great. Um, so yeah, I th yeah. Um, it's just, just really not spoken about. And I don't, no. Obviously that that many people don't come out. And there is, there is a lot of, you would imagine, a lot of, uh, of gay men in, in football. Um, yeah, that kind of makes me sad because I think, you know, I, from, I, I think it's quite a, a a good environment that we have in our change room anyway for it to come out, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, maybe, like you say, it just takes one or two to, to get the ball rolling and make yeah. people feel more comfortable about it.
Thanks for a lovely chat. Yeah, it was yeah, good, good to good, good to right. catch up. Yeah. It's great to hear from Chloe and Liv uh, and hear all about the work that the outhouse uh, does. And you can read more about the Rainbow Ball in our match day program and on our website. Right, let's get into this afternoon's game now. Remember, as we mentioned, you can have a look at the team that Danny Cowley has selected for this afternoon on our website and on our socials. But now it's time to hear from Jay Mingy. Jay, tough game coming up against Accrington at the weekend. You must just be pleased to be uh, back involved and out on the pitch, ready for selection. Yeah, first of all, it's been a blessing to be back. Obviously, thank God, always. Um, and I was just to try and get my head down and help the team as much as possible. Regarding the game, I think every game in this league is a tough game. There's no easy games to expect and we're ready for it. So we'll go and attack it the best we can. And every footballer I've ever spoken to, you just want the games to come round uh, the next time, especially after a defeat. Mm -hmm. So how disappointing that Tuesday didn't get played in the end. Yeah, I know it was a bit unfortunate because we wanted to really bounce back real quick after the Saturday defeat. But obviously he's given us more time on the grass to perfect other areas going in towards Saturday. So there's less than a curse at the same time. And, and how good was it to be back? playing in a league game when oh, you came on at Harrogate, yeah. even with the pressure of it being nil-nil. Yeah, obviously it was, it, was, it was a great feeling because being out on the sideline for about two, two, two and a half months is you just want to get back on the pitch and I was finally doing it, so I was happy. Obviously the circumstances of the game, there was a bit of pressure, there was a bit of tension, so yeah, it was, it was an unfortunate one, but we move on from that. And when you're out injured, you know, how hard is it mentally to keep doing everything right in the gym and keep going in the treatment room and, and then repeat, repeat, repeat? Yeah. I think like, it's easy to get into the mindset of um, <clears throat> like, dwelling on it and but, you know, time doesn't wait for anyone so at the end of the day if I start doing my work properly it's only going to benefit me and if I don't it's going to harm me so you just got to do what's right for you. And, and how beneficial is it, you know, you don't want anyone else to be injured, mm -hmm. you want everyone else to be fit and healthy but mm -hmm. when you've had the likes of Sanson and Fika and Manny in there with you at times, do you push each other along? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, you've, the worst thing about being injured is sometimes you can be alone and you can almost be the forgotten man, but when you've got the lads around you, it really helps out. So yeah, real good, but unfortunate at the same time, yeah. And are you a frustrated spectator or do you use that time to look and see how players from both sides are, are playing your position? I think it's just about, yeah, you just try and learn. I don't think you can look at it in a, in a negative way. Like you're, you're there to learn ultimately. Like just take this time, step back, observe because you're not really going to observe much in a football career, so yeah. yeah. And obviously, earlier in the season, you were building up your fitness and building it up and got in the team and got mm -hmm. in the starting eleven. Now you've got to do all that over again. So uh, that competition for places is tough in that midfield area. Yeah, but I'm, I'm ready for the competition, you know. Like, hey, it wasn't going to be easy anyways, so I've been doing it, all, been fighting all my life. I can keep fighting a few more weeks, a few more days, however long it takes, so yeah. It was great to hear from Jay Mingy and uh, ironically the the last Accrington game uh, was his last before he got injured. He's now back after two, three months break and he'll be hoping to make an impact this afternoon. Let's remind ourselves what happened in that game.
Joe Taylor's strike was enough to secure all three points at the WAM Stadium last time we faced Accrington Stanley. Now it's time to go and take your seats and cheer on the boys as they take on Accrington Stanley in today's League 2 fixture. <laughs> 